A rebuttal to Variety's Marvel Studios in Shambles articles comes at us courtesy of Forbes and journalist Mark Hughes, who breaks down exactly where the last two phases stand compared to the Infinity Saga. And well, um, yeah, as he states it, Marvel Studios' woes are overstated. <laughs> So again, if you would like to read this for yourself, it is a rather long article that I'm going to cover here in a couple minutes. But essentially, he talks about how all this Marvel Studios in shambles, Marvel Studios dying, is widely oversaturated and pushed to the point where that's the only narrative, but the reality isn't there. So what he does is he analyzes every single film's box office, the film's profits, and then the film's reception, and ultimately, how does it face-to-phase -face sort of set a pace in terms of growth and averages? And across all of this, he talks about various changes, the struggles during phase one, where nobody cared about the MCU besides, well, Iron Man 1 and the first Avengers film, which was like a movement, right? Then he talks about phase two, where... A couple of these films were going to be guaranteed bombs that people were literally saying are going to kill Marvel. Then he talks about Phase 3 in the same way, and then Phase 4 and 5. And then he analyzes all the box office across, well, one, the Infinity Saga. And across the Infinity Saga, the average for the box office was $935 million. And then he compares the Multiverse Saga so far... And the average is 815 million. So it's a step down, yes, but you're also comparing the Infinity Saga picking up steam versus the Multiverse Saga having a few big ones, but also ones that are profitable and only two, I guess you could maybe argue three, that aren't. So if you average it, you see that Marvel Studios isn't in trouble at all. Instead, they're exactly where they are and where they were always. And he points out, well, you look at something like, yeah, Guardians made a whole lot of money. Volume 3 was a big hit. Quantumania? Yeah, that needed a few more million to make a profit. And he says, well, look at Phase 1. The Incredible Hulk, Thor, and Captain America were flops but avengers iron man 1 and iron man 2 saved that phase and then he does that same thing for phase 2 and 3 and talks about how some of those films barely make a profit and if they do it's a tiny one you know like spider-man homecoming for example doctor strange the original ant-man the original guardians was a shocking one that made a whole lot of profit so he kind of breaks it down and just says yeah Marvel bad, Marvel shambles, that's the narrative. But in reality, compare everything, that's not the case. And then he goes on and talks a little bit about TV as well and analyzes that and compares Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, Inhumans, Punisher, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Cloak and Dagger, Runaways, Hellstrom, all this stuff that they produce and compares it to the MCU and literally points out to the fact that the MCU TV shows are across the board more well recognized watched more and have higher reviews aggregates so even marvel studios tv has toppled marvel tv as a whole so there you go it's a pretty good article again if you want to read it um you can you're going to be there for about 30 minutes um it's a long article but he kind of just goes a little bit more into details and everything i just explained in about four